nice to see you guys. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day because you should be having a wonderful day. And you guys are probably wanting my viewpoint. A lot of you have been asking because Chris did make a video on our first date. Not too fast. There's a hill. There's a lot of you guys wanted to know my response to our first date and how it went and like kind of my viewpoint on it and i'm more than happy to tell you guys that story so let's cue the intro and get that So I'm gonna start off like I don't even know where to start. So Chris and I had been texting uh, We had a mutual friend and it got to a point where We both wanted to you know go on a date and see how it would work and um, I had been to LA previously for work but um, there was just nothing matching up to make time for him. So then we thought, well, let's just make time a weekend for you to come out here and we can go on our first date, get to know each other and see if this connection is real. So I ended up booking my flight to LA for a weekend trip. I was originally going to be staying at a hotel nearby, but due to COVID, it just didn't seem real so we took that huge chance and Chris invited me to stay at his apartment which was really like oh no like what if we don't like each other what if he doesn't like me like what am I gonna do and I think that was also one of his biggest concerns as well but at this point we just trusted each other so much that we said you know what let's just do it see how it goes and so I remember waking up super early like 5 a.m. to get ready woke up my kids fed them breakfast and they were gonna spend the night at uh, the weekend with my, my mom she usually would take them on weekends anyways so they were excited and I I was super excited. I left for the airport four hours early and I just remember being so freaked out and nervous and scared and just sitting in the airport. I had breakfast, which was delicious and just didn't know what to do. And at the time, like I didn't really have good service because I was still using like my a sim card from Korea and just going off Wi-Fi. I don't know why it took me so long. It's so silly. Like, I guess it was my way of just being like, I don't need a phone. Totally false, totally need a phone guys. Uh, and I got into the flight and I arrived and Chris uh, was actually running late but I told him to pick me up a little bit later than my landing time because I wanted to freshen up you know a long flight I was super nervous just wanted to be approachable and like you know how girls are we want to look good on the first date and uh, I had texted him and he uh, was running a little late because he uh, was doing something with his apartment management or something so he was running a little bit late and I went outside I totally got lost in the airport I went out the wrong exit apparently which is not like the pickup exit I went like drop off area I don't know it was weird so uh, he got there a little bit like 40 minutes after I landed and um, during that time I was sitting outside and this man I didn't know just started to hit on me would not leave me alone excuse me can I touch you for a minute <laughs> excuse me can I touch you for a minute yeah, what's up? Did not catch the hint that I didn't want to be talked to. And I was just trying my best to like, okay, stop talking to me, dude. And I remember texting Chris like, can you, there's someone talking to me, like, will you hurry? And he finally found me. And usually like when you first like want to see someone, you're like, oh my God, hi. But I was just like wanting to get out of there because of this dude hitting on me. And I just wanted to leave. <laughs> so like, it was really awkward when we first saw each other. I like went up to him, I was like, hurry, we gotta go. And so that was kind of awkward. And to this day, I feel so silly about it. And we laugh about it all the time. And we got into his car and we were both really nervous nervous and really shy so like conversation was good I was trying to talk as much as possible to hide the fact that I was nervous and that's what I do when I'm nervous I just talk 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 and uh, we kind of like he just kind of like pointed things out on the drive and then uh, we arrived at his apartment because this was during quarantine time in LA there was really nowhere to go so we figured we would just order in dinner and talk and we ordered uh, chicken uh, Korean chicken Korean fried chicken and we ordered like three big boxes like three huge boxes that we uh, obviously couldn't eat we already share plates when we go out to dinner as is we both have very like small appetite 
and uh, I think I had like two pieces of chicken and the chicken's small. It's like chicken wings <laughs> and he, I think he had like two, three and we ended up like just trying to shake off the nerves and we were talking for hours and hours and the whole time he could not really make eye contact with me. So I was like, oh no, he doesn't like me. I'm totally screwing this up. I don't think he's interested. But later to come finding out that like on his side, he was extremely nervous as well and was like pep talking himself in the bathroom to just. Hey, Mary Elizabeth. Hey, Mary Elizabeth. Hey, Mary Elizabeth. Hey, Mary Elizabeth. Hey there, Mary. Oh, Mary Elizabeth, I thought you never asked. Talk to her, do what you can. <laughs> In my head, I'm like, stop talking. Like me, not him, like me. I'm like, ah, I don't know what to say. And uh, we ended up just talking. And then it, we he made um, two drinks. I believe it was a whiskey sour. And <laughs> it loosened the mood definitely. So then we both ended up just talking, didn't even eat. And we were sitting at the dinner table for like four hours, five hours. And it was just getting really late. And I noticed he kept disappearing to the bathroom. And Dude! It's not a cheese I burger, was man. Just, uh... It's a steak. I thought, oh, he's just not interested. He hasn't like made any small moves. Like, you know how sometimes people make small moves, but like, uh, uh, like tapping your shoulder or like touching your hand or something, nothing, guys. <laughs> and so I uh, recommended like, hey, do you want to watch a movie? Uh, Cause I knew he had a projector and he's like, yeah, let's watch a movie. And I thought, okay, this is where I'm gonna try and be brave and make a move or maybe he'll make a move. Cause that's what people do when they watch movies together. They try to hold hands. They try to do the arm thing, the yawn arm thing or whatever. And uh, we got to the couch <laughs> and uh, we turned on Rocco's life. It was like a movie that they made on Netflix. That's supposed to be like the series 20 years later. And I was sitting on the edge of the couch and he, he sat like three feet away from me. And I was like, yeah, this dude does not like me. <laughs> and uh, it just kept getting later and later and the movie ended and it was actually 5 a.m. And at this point I was really tired and I assumed like maybe I would sleep on the couch or he would sleep on the couch and then someone would sleep in the bed. And uh, that's when he turned to me and he's like, oh, I, I sleep without my shirt on. Is that okay? And I was like, oh, whoa. Okay. okay, I guess like we're gonna share a bed. Maybe he likes me. And I think at this point he did like, we were both tired. So we laid in bed. And we were just talking and he looked at me and then he kissed me on the forehead and we fell asleep and uh, we did not move at all. We were dead out and in the morning we were both kind of like hungover. And so he made coffee and it's kind of our tradition now to drink coffee out of teacups like he said in his story. And it's just so fun. So we drink our coffee, we ended up talking for hours and hours. I, I can't even remember what we talked about because we just talked about so many things. And at this point I kept thinking, wow, I really like him. He seems very genuine, very nice, very structured. We actually planned to go to the market because he had no groceries in his house. And you know, bachelors, they, they don't really keep groceries in their house. Um, and I'm a mom who's like, fridge is always full, whose pantry is always full. I have like 20 different juices, 20 different drinks, like water everywhere. <laughs> so we decided to go to the Korean market and I hadn't gone to a Korean market in a very long time since I left Korea. And it was really nice because it's weird because I lived there for a long time. So it was nice to have that familiar familiar setting and also kind of weird because I didn't have the best experience in Korea and I hope to change that in the future because um, I do really love Korea and we went to the market and I wanted to hold his hand so 
I uh, grabbed his hand and just smiled at him and after that you could tell he was totally comfortable and I think that's what kind of got him to shake off his nerves because after that he was all very handsy, hugging, very cuddly, just very affectionate. And then I think we went to bed really early that night and then the next day would be Sunday. And Sunday was probably one of the most magical days I've ever experienced in my life. Uh, we wanted to go to dinner but we couldn't so we figured we would turn uh, the apartment into a fancy restaurant and we would get done up. And so I had taken a shower and I was getting ready and we weren't allowed to see each other and he was getting ready in the bedroom. So we weren't allowed to see each other. It was supposed to be a surprise. And I've never had uh, a man look at me the way he did. And I think this is what really did it for me and was a huge turning point on me realizing that I deserve a man who looks at me this way, who treats me and cherishes me this way. But I had stepped out and I remember just looking up and his face was just like, wow. Like I wish I could show you his face, but it wasn't like, oh dang, dang girl, or girl. like, it was like, he looked at me with pure beauty. Uh, uh, uh. I've never had someone look at me and just by looking at me make me feel like I'm the most beautiful person in the world in their eyes and that's what he did and we ended up having the dinner we made uh, food, uh, I think we did Korean barbecue and as well um, and then the next day at this point I had fallen deeply for this guy and thought he was just the most amazing person in the world and so kind and sweet and seemed genuine and then I was also sad like you know I don't know if this is gonna work we both have very busy work schedules I'm not in LA as often because of COVID and also I have children and I don't know if I'm ready to bring a man into my children's life just yet because I had just gone through a really difficult um, relationship and I've had a past of choosing the wrong men who have turned into abusive men in the past and I take accountability for that and I didn't want to make that mistake again and so it was like a very bittersweet moment a very sad moment and you could tell with and it was very bittersweet is a very sad moment we didn't know what to do and I didn't want to leave him and I left I got home and I just remember feeling so sad and I texted him that I got home and then <laughs> I noticed on his Instagram uh, he had he had posted a photo of himself with dying flowers next to him and these are the same flowers that I had sent him it's an inside joke maybe we'll do a story time on why I sent him flowers um, and he was next to the dying flowers with uh, the same teacups and it was just kind of his message to me like no I'm gonna be here you don't have to worry I'm not gonna leave like I want to work hard for you and your family like I'm gonna continue I'm gonna continue to stay in this relationship and be the man I can be and I just thought that was the most romantic thing. <laughs> and then um, I think it was like a day after I had arrived, I got um, a knock on my door and I opened it and it was balloons for my kids and uh, edible arrangements. I don't know if you guys know what that is. And it was from him and he was just telling me how amazing the weekend was and how he couldn't wait to see me again and we had planned for him to come see me three weeks later and uh, the kids would be that would be the time my kids would be at my mom spending the weekend there because that's what they like to do hang out with their grandma and grandpa uh, <laughs> and so we had planned it around that and um i just remember like wow he's coming here and uh he came and uh, I don't think he ever left after that. <laughs> the rest is history. That was so happy. Anyways, guys, that is my side of the events. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. I also want to remind you guys to see you guys in the next video. Yup.